No, you don't take a bath. You don't wash your hair in there. Keep your hair out of that. You put your bottom in it. Yes. Good morning, everyone. Okay, the next few videos are going to be pretty special. Today, we are flying out of England and going to Italy. It's actually really exciting because our friend Angelo, we went to college with, is in Italy. He was in theater with Christopher and I, and we did shows together. He called us and he was like, hey, I founded and co-owned this touring company called Live Italy. Would you like to come check out Italy and we'll show you all around and set you up and make sure that you have a great time here? And we were like, yes, please, absolutely, 100%. These are all tours that they actually offer through their company. So what we're doing, you can do too. So they are giving us these tours for free. We're very excited about it. We're very excited that Angelo created a business. I'm just so proud of any of my friends who are running businesses. So we're very, very excited to try out all of the tour experiences that Angelo is doing. So right now we're under some scaffolding. It's raining quite a bit, but it's not like too bad. It's like really nice temperature and it's just sort of drizzling. It's a good London goodbye. What do you think? It's sad. <laughs> Okay, we are on our third train today. How's everybody doing? Great. Good, we got up a little earlier than we were used to, and it's fine. I think we're fine, right? No, we're, we're not even up that early, and Rome's gonna be an hour later, so we're gonna have to get used to getting up even earlier. You guys up for it? Yeah. <laughs> Jacob's already asleep. The next station is Heathrow Terminal 4. This flight isn't very full, so Duncan gets his own seat. You get your own seat? Yeah. yeah, you do. You feel like a big boy? You a big boy? Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm the first officer speaking. On behalf of Alitalia, the captain and the whole crew, welcome aboard this flight, Alitalia 211. We have landed, we are here. How's it feel? Good. And look at this cool car we're in. Party time, party what? time, party time. I didn't even know cars like this existed. We're, we have three people facing the other three, it's so cool. I, is this is this in the United States, is this a thing? It's, it's news to me. This is our first time in a car in over a week and we will be in cars a lot when we're in Rome. That's part of how this touring company operates. We're getting picked up at the airport right now, and we'll also be doing golf cart tours, so get ready for that. It's fun going backwards. You like going backwards? Yeah. yeah. We didn't bring a car seat for Duncan or a booster chair for Parker, but they both need them, so part of what this car service had as well were seats for them for their safety which is great because we didn't have to cart them all around europe okay cool dudes what do you think yeah i am noticing that the car seat here is a little different i don't know if it's just how they are for one-year-olds in italy or if it's one that was maybe given to us by mistake you can see it doesn't have the like front thing here also in california now we have to have our babies rear facing until they're two and i'm assuming it's different here because that's kind of a new law for us so i don't know if everywhere has adapted that like i i'd assume that there are places that are 
are doing lots of different things. So, yeah, so that's one interesting difference we've noticed already. We're starting to get into like places that are starting to look a little different. It's going, uh oh. Don't, that is not a sink. What is it? Is it a potty? No, nope. potty's next to it. Is it a potty sink? Kind of. Is it, it is kind of a potty sink. Well, it's called a bidet. Babies go potty? No, it's called a bidet. It's a bidet. Oh, is it where you take a bath? No, you don't take a <laughs> you bath. Wash your hair. You don't wash your hair in there. <laughs> keep your hair out of that. You keep. Oh. Yes. Does it wash your bottom? Yes. I know it! I do it! Yeah! Okay, I'm yeah. going to the other bathroom to test it out! <laughs> <laughs> a bunch of bottom cleaners. A bunch of bottom cleaners. Oh my goodness, that was terrifying. <laughs> Obviously, I'm super curious as to what this bidet business is all about. So I was going pee and I was sitting on the potty and I like leaned over and I started like fiddling with the things <laughs> to see what it did. Cause I don't know, I thought it was like a squirty thing or something, I don't know, but it started filling up and then I couldn't figure out how to turn it off. And I like, I was like turning all the knobs. <laughs> it was like filling up, like just like, like I don't know, like a potty, like a bathtub. And I didn't expect that. I didn't. I don't know what it does. And like, I I'm not, I did not use it. I was just trying to figure out how it was working. And I still don't know how it works. Like, I have no idea what it was supposed to do. I guess maybe you're supposed to like lower your business in there. I guess, which I didn't expect that. I started doing that. I'm like, I don't know what that's supposed to do. <laughs> and then so I did that. And. Anyway, something that happens to me often in life, it's happened to me with the fireplace too, is that I turn a knob to turn something on and then I get so freaked out that I can't remember which way I turned it to turn it on. So that's what happened. And it was like going up higher and higher and I was like, ah! I thought I was gonna flood the bathroom because I'm so ridiculously lame and don't know how to use this thing. And I had no idea. Like, I thought it was gonna be like a like a fountain, like a squirty mechanism. I'm gonna watch some YouTube tutorials and figure this out because I'm fascinated right now. A uh, diagram. We're Googling. Dry your skin. Okay, dry your skin. Some bidets have a built-in air dryer that you can use. What? You gotta Don't be, think so. it's like really important to be dry here. Rinse out the bidet. I wasn't expecting that. Rinse out the bidet, this is a lot of work. Once you are off the bidet, Run the jets at very low pressure for a few seconds to rinse the basin and keep the bidet fresh. Okay. Wash your hands. Wait, I feel like... What's going on? I feel like we skipped some things. It is... Well, we got Whoa. some diagrams. Wait, is that the potty? That. Or is yeah. that the bidet? No, that's the no, potty. No, use the potty first. Okay. okay. The purpose of the bidet is to help clean <laughs> off after toilet use. You can use the bidet in conjunction with toilet paper, or you can use the bidet on its very own. So, there you have it. Step two, find the bidet. <laughs> find it. See, they act like it's really simple, like they're like, come on, all you have to do is go to the potty and then find it, but I was on the potty and I found it and then I almost flooded the bathroom. See, all I wanna know is, whoa! <laughs> she is using it! I feel like this is not hygienic. Like, the whole point of this bidet, I, I wouldn't sit on that thing. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> but what are you doing? Are you like swishing the water with your hands? I think you just let it run. It, and you let it just pass Look at over this thing. You. It goes, in, it just goes straight into the basin. I know, basin. but you can't, you gotta like, gotta like You can't get, get in there. I think you it's probably goes, can. It's deep. The water's like coming out like deep inside. You can't get your business down in there or else you'd be like on the actual, like in there in the basin. It's not flowing out like that. I think I figured it out now. Some bidets simply have a faucet that fills the basin, much as you would fill a sink basin. Yeah, that's what was happening. In this, in this case, you'll need to use your hands to manually clean yourself. We <laughs> what? I 
do not understand the purpose of this. Just get in the bath, take a shower. I, I don't get it. I thought it was gonna be cool. I was kind of, being, I was like ready to be like, yeah, I get this. No, I didn't. I, I tried turning it on. I almost flooded the whole bathroom. That's what I was expecting. I was expecting a squirter that's doing work. So it's a pot of water that you're supposed to lower your nethers into. Are you supposed to do, and you put your hands in it? No, it's Put your like, hands in this dirty water? I guess so. I don't, I'm not putting my hands in a potty water. That's so not, and then putting the potty water on my business. That's protected business. And just rinsing the thing out with the first flush is not enough you so, don't give it a rinse you fill it up and then you splash yourself you give it a heavy bleaching and then maybe you can put your business in there the nice thing about toilet paper is that there is a barrier between your hands and i feel like else. this is basically like taking a toilet sitting in it and like splashing around in the water and making well, sure after that water you flush it right unacceptable we have two rooms that connect here the ceilings go up for like a mile i don't know <laughs> <laughs> it's so much space. They're the highest ceilings I've ever seen in my life. In a hotel, yeah. I've Not never... even a hotel. Like I think we're in like a an actual palace. Two beds pushed together here. And I love the floors. Look at the floor. Wow, look at that. They're beautiful. Hardwood floors and these beautiful rugs. My bed. This is your bed? And then two more closets and we're in the other room. Similar layout. This opens up. And now we're in this like courtyard area. I, like, what? It's just beautiful. This is unbelievable. Wow. So in London, there really weren't any outdoor spaces. Like we, we walked to Hyde Park and that was the only time the kids got really like outside aside from just walking on sidewalks. And to have like a little space outside feels like such a luxury. This place is unreal. This is such a cool hotel and such a neat experience. I can't even handle it right now and it's raining and I love the rain, this is so magical. So I've noticed this in a couple places here in Europe but the beds, these bigger beds are actually just two beds pushed together. So that's what this this is and the one in the other room. I don't know why that is. We're from California and we made our own super giant bed called a California King there. We didn't, but like there is one that exists. So we're used to like just big beds happening. Here, they push two little beds together to make a big bed. Can get daddy? <gasps> oh my goodness! Don't can, that was so good! Got this. Big boy. Got oh. We are going to be here for around 10 days. <laughs> so we're going to have a whole series on Rome. There is a reason we are doing this. There, there are actually two reasons. Number one, we want to show you guys that it is possible to happily travel with your family. A lot of people say, make sure you travel before you have kids. And yes, it's wonderful to travel before you have kids. But if you're able to also travel with your children, it can be a totally incredible experience. There are absolutely differences, <laughs> but it's possible and it can be wonderful. So I really hope we can inspire you and show you some awesome ways to travel with children. The number two reason is if you can't travel with your children. Like if you do not have the financial means, if it's just not possible, we hope to show you what Rome is like and to educate you as much as we can. We make these videos in large part for ourselves. They're our family memories. They're the things we can show our kids or ourselves when we forget what happened when we were on that trip. And it's also something we can pass down to the next generation and this, these are our legacy. But we also make them so we can share them with the world and so that you guys can experience these places that you may never get to experience and also to help you if you're about to experience these places like if you're about to go to Rome what a cool thing to watch these videos and to see what what you want to do and maybe to learn something about the places you're about to visit so that you can appreciate them more there is a whole purpose behind this series I'm so excited about it we have been dreaming of doing something like this for years. This is a really big deal to us. And we're also going to be going to Florence and Pompeii. So that's part of this trip too. So it's not just gonna be all, all Rome, and but. Naples. And Naples, we're in, we're in Italy. We're gonna share Italy with you. Let's go. Okay, seriously, what is going on with this hotel? Are we staying in an actual museum or a palace? 
This is the fanciest place I've ever been. I don't even know how, it's, everything's marble. The whole land is marble and velvet. It's an actual palace. Look at this giant lion. Casual lion stairs. What is this magical palace? We are about to meet up with Angelo. We haven't seen him in over 10 years, and we get to go have dinner with him. I'm so excited to see Angelo. He's wonderful. <gasps> it's Angelo! Hey! <laughs> Yay! I'm so excited. It's so good to see you. Yeah, it's been 12 years. Uh, yeah. 2006. I don't know. I just kept saying over 10 because I didn't want to do the math. <laughs> Nobody wants to do the math. No. <laughs> well, we're going to go have dinner and have a wonderful time. So, Angelo just brought us a care package, and in it are a lot of the things that we'll be using for the week. And Parker has discovered these. What is it? Wow, Parker. <laughs> what you have to, you have to, you have to, make, you have to build it. I like that. That is a look. How do I build it? That's what everybody in Rome wears. <laughs> this is style. You go. Now you need the, a second ingredient, which is the phone on your Colosseum tour. You're gonna see these ancient ruins, with lots of stone and rock and marble. It's gonna be kind of hard to figure out what it lo looked like back when it was actually utilized. So we created these virtual reality reconstructions to show you how it used to be 2,000 years ago. <laughs> so that's where the gladiators used to fight. You're where the gladiators used to fight for blood and life. It was super cool. You can't see the phone though. What did it look like? Coliseum. <laughs> Coliseum-y? I did it! Nice. Nice. Did I? Good feeling, yeah, Jake. Certainly did. All looking good. We just finished dinner. Christopher and I both had two very authentically Roman dishes, and Angela will have to tell you what they were me called. Too, me too. Oh, and so did Jacob. He had a, a big kid dish. He wanted to try something new. I was very proud of him. Bailey had beef carpaccio, which is raw beef. Angela's gonna tell you what we ate because I can't pronounce it, and when he pronounces it, it sounds incredible. So here you go. <laughs> All right. Well, you had cacio e pepe, and then the boys had a matriciana. Cacio e pepe, it's like cheeses and pepper. And I loved how he described it because he said that it's not an Italian dish, it's a Roman dish because... We try and make sure that food does not travel many kilometers. And so Rome is famous for four pasta dishes, which are cacio e pepe, matriciana, carbonara, and gricia. And so we had two of them tonight. I love that concept that the food doesn't travel very far. Very neat. Hi. Let's talk about what we learned today. We learned that a stick of butter is entertainment enough. We learned not to wash our hair in the bidet. And finally, we learned that if you want to impress Jessica, all you have to do is install a casual lion at the end of your staircase. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time. <laughs> I think they yeah. want to count them. Jacob, Jacob wants to count them. I want to count them. You want to count them? Can you hold my seat for me? <laughs> <laughs> is that an apricot pit? What is that? It's an apricot. And there are the splits on the Spanish steps. One, two, three, two, three, four.